All right, strap in, brush your shoulders off, hot takes incoming. Let me be very clear, Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires is a good game, okay? I hate that I even have to preface a video like this because my opinion on that should be obvious at this point. I would not have covered it for six years if I thought it was bad, if I thought the devs were irredeemable pieces of poop who burned my crops, poisoned my water supply, and delivered plagues into my houses. Look, it is absolutely insane variety and replayability, and it deserves much the lauding and adulation it has received for the sheer scope and ambition put forth. But that does not absolve it from criticism, okay? That does not mean that Immortal Empires has not failed to deliver in some important areas. 95% of the videos I've ever made for this series and plan to make for this series are a love letter to it and how awesome it is to see it all brought to life. But I'd argue that 5% where I'm not just playing and having fun is just as important, if not more so, because that's where change can potentially happen, where hopefully devs can listen to feedback and stuff can improve. Because most of us just want this game to be the best it can possibly be, right? And it's frustrating when it consistently falls short on simple stuff. I do not expect every bug in this game to get fixed. That ship sailed long ago. It is a physical impossibility, even in the best of games. That is a vain, ego-driven dream to think, yes, this game should be bug-free. It will never happen, and that's okay. A game of this scope and magnitude will always have bugs. Even the best games and best dev teams on the planet cannot escape it. So the existence of bugs and balance issues is not in and of itself inherently a failure in my eyes. But the simple fact of the matter is, the combined campaign is currently buckling under the weight of a host of bugs, balancing issues, and wildly shifting ideologies seem to pendulum back and forth each and every patch, both in battle and on the strategic map. Every time a new DLC launches or a new patch is introduced, dozens of things break, and they don't just break for a day or a week or a month. Sometimes they go years without being fixed or simply never get fixed at all. I'm about to drop a bunch of examples on y'all's heads, but probably the most damning one I can think of right now that kind of encapsulates what I think is the core issue with Immortal Empires is Damsel's Tross not working properly or progressing. That was literally added in the most recent patch and was advertised as one of the big changes in Bretonia's campaign. The Damsels would now have access to their own version of Knightly Vows. Sounds great on paper, except no one bothered to boot up a Bretonia campaign and verify that it actually worked. Whether that was down to a weird versioning issue or a last second change breaking the code or something else, I don't know. And frankly, I don't really care. But when you have a big patch with Bretonia update plastered everywhere, and basically the first line in that huge section is Tross for damsels, and they don't even function, I think that speaks to some inherent problems on the back end. Which leads me to my main point. Creative Assembly is now the biggest games developer in the UK. They have been for at least a couple of years. And while they certainly do not have an infinite money cheat, they presumably have considerable resources and manpower to draw from. You can't possibly have a behemoth like Immortal Empires and only a small team dedicated to supporting it, right? You can't combine three games together into something this massive and expect to keep up with this ever-expanding deluge of broken things by tossing a couple devs its way and saying, good luck, have fun. From what we understand, the team on IE is now down to around 20 people, and the vast majority of those people are focused on new content, not old. Which means there are only a handful of devs currently being expected to keep track of and fix seven plus years of constantly changing stuff from three separate games. And it's just not working that well. A game this large needs a custodian team to come in after every major DLC and fix those outrageous issues that people immediately find. And I know why it hasn't happened yet, because it costs money because it will bite into their profit margins, because fixing bugs doesn't directly increase revenue. But here's the thing. If people's trust in the product is eroded slowly over time, because bugs that have been known about and reported on over and over and over and over again for months or even years on end still aren't being fixed, that will also cut into profit margins and in some cases, lose them customers forever. So while business analytics might say, oh, hiring 10 people whose sole job it is to come in and just fix all the broken skills and graphical glitches after every patch is a total waste. That's $400,000 a year eating directly into our budget that now can't be contributed towards the next project. Well, there's a tipping point where negative word of mouth and lost customers equals or exceeds that opportunity cost. And that stuff might not show up on your analytics, but you can be damn sure it's still having an effect on your customer base and by extension on your profit margins. 
There are whole factions on YouTube and beyond made up of people who feel burned by this series and would probably still be playing it if this cycle wasn't so common dating back to the release of Rome 2. To further the point about manpower, I think they literally have like one guy doing battle balancing right now for 20 races. 20! And what, like 500 plus units? That is insane. And more to the point, it isn't fair to him. It isn't reasonable to expect that one guy can handle all of that, or even if it was two or three, I'm still not sure that's enough. This game is ginormous. On a separate note, what even happened to the Proving Grounds beta? They made this huge deal about a testing grounds where people could provide their feedback on patches, used it for like one whole update cycle, and then it was never seen or heard from again. Using the community at large to beta test your product simply does not cut it in the first place. It can't be its own thing, because even when we do report bugs, they often don't get fixed, which is why we have silly stuff like the community bug fix mod, which should never be a requirement to play a game. But it could be a start. Then at least you have a way to gather feedback that isn't on a live version of the game. And far be it for me to tell CA how to allocate their resources, because I'm just some scrub on the internet, right? I don't have access to their financials, I don't have the big brain required to run a business that complex, but there has to be a better way to maintain this game and future Total War games going forward than what is currently being implemented on the back end, and I'm going to show you why. This is not going to be a comprehensive list, not by a long shot, but here are some frustrating problems currently in the combined campaign for Warhammer 3, many of which I personally reported back before this game even launched that still have not been addressed a year and a half later. Depending on how I edit this, you'll likely already have seen a bunch of examples of what I'm talking about, but this was flickering I covered in a Bellacore battle video I posted back on February 13th of last year. February 13th, 2022. In reality, I had already informed the devs of this problem at least a few weeks before that, so long before the game even came out, I had told them what the issue was, or at least that there was an issue, and still hasn't been fixed. Look at this. This is on about 50% of the battle maps in the entire game. That is not an exaggeration. There's a good chance it's even more than that. I can randomly click on any battle list map and there is a good chance I can find this kind of obscene flickering within 10 seconds of loading in. Basically a gigantic black crisscrossing mesh that exists under the terrain on most battle maps that becomes exacerbated and glitches up over the top of terrain when you zoom in close, particularly with the N, Z, and X keys. But you can frequently find this kind of stuff just by moving the camera around normally. You don't even have to zoom. This was never a problem in Warhammer 2. It did not exist in Warhammer 2, but it has been there since early access for Warhammer 3 on hundreds of maps. And if you need proof of me reporting that, go watch the start of my Bellacore buggy battle video from early 2022. On a similar note, spell effect flickering, blood flickering, and water flickering are a very common problem and may even be related to each other, but they have had this issue since Warhammer 2. So they've been in the game for five plus years. Most bodies of water, particularly those on river maps or maps with small ponds, behave like this. They just wildly flicker in place. It's not a complete constant. There are times where you can move your camera and it'll stop for a little bit, but I think we can look at this right now as I move my camera around. It looks terrible. And all you have to do is just boot up the game and you will likely see it immediately. Then there's the absolutely horrendous implementation of SSAO, where any unit in shadow looks like absolute dog shit. Like they've got a cloud of flies swirling around their head. I have no idea how something this important graphically even makes it into the final build, much less survives for a year and a half afterwards, but this is truly horrendous and unacceptable to look at. And it's so easy to find. It doesn't even require mountainous terrain to create those shadows that then make the SSAO look like, look like trash. Even clouds going overhead on any battle map triggers this exact same issue where these weird dark rays fully engulf a unit and drown out all detail and color. Considering the implementation of SSAO was literally the biggest graphical complaint in game two, the fact that it got even worse in game three is a pretty bad look. And again, this was stuff reported directly to the devs during early access a year and a half ago. I have no idea if they haven't addressed it because they don't know how to, but it sucks. So if it's frustrating for me, someone with a direct line of communication with Creative Assembly, who is being entrusted to play early and record early and not leak stuff, imagine what it's like for you guys who can't directly talk to the devs. 
If I sometimes feel like I'm shouting into the void, then that's probably doubly true for a lot of you. As many of you know by now, the most recent patch broke Nakai and has made his campaign unplayable. You just straight up cannot recruit Crossgores at all. How did that happen? Not sure. Kind of a big issue for a Crossgore Lord focused on buffing them though. There are dozens of examples of texts and skill tree upgrades not applying bonuses to units properly, and dozens of examples of things we've been told were fixed in patch notes that weren't actually fixed. Not because they're lying, obviously, but because they just weren't tested properly and were still pushed into the final build. The good thing on that front is that with a new, really nice edition of UI that says which units should be receiving those buffs or not, it has now become a lot easier to diagnose those issues. So that's a good quality of life change from CA. One, I think, I think one of the better changes they've made for IE, but it does highlight an ongoing set of significant problems where a skill is supposed to say applied to Skull Crushers of Corn, and it just straight up does not do that, which wastes time and resources of the player in a game where creating armies with special buffs and synergies is a major component. Free Company Militia have been missing their swords for quite a while now. Doomfire Warlocks were on that train, but it appears that they've been fixed, at least in my version of the build. They straight up punch people in melee right now, Free Company Militia that is, which looks funny, but they're supposed to have cutlasses and that's been true for a long time. Chaos Dwarf sub-faction banners are not working correctly and often display pure black instead of their faction specific colors. Here are a few examples of what the incorrect banners look like. See I'm playing as the Legion of Asgore and the Overlords of Zarduk, and in both, the banners are blacked out and have lost most of their detail. But this is what they're supposed to look like. You can see there's a pretty big difference there. The customizable player enemy health bar colors and settings are not working. Changing one defaults the other back to green or red. So in campaign and in replays, I cannot color code the health bars of factions. These were both problems in early access for the Chaos Warps DLC. I explicitly told the devs about it, and it's still probably gonna end up being three or four months before it gets fixed, if that. And again, as a software developer, I get that you need to prioritize certain things when you're trying to meet deadlines. And obviously the Chaos Warps should not be delayed for a problem like this one, but it's just a frustrating feeling to report something, then still see it be an issue for many months or years afterwards. And this has been a common problem. This one's a fun one. Not only are we getting that flickering, but we're also demonstrating the carousel of unit effects that seem to randomly turn on and off with any given patch. Since launch, certain units will lose their glowing eyes and effects which give them their character. Initially, it was corn demons, bloodthirsters and bloodletters were the biggest examples I could remember, but for a while, it's been wild riders and others. Great stag knights, wild riders, their eyes do not glow balefully with those beautiful orbs, they are dead. There are hundreds of others of glitches, bugs, plenty of those kinds of things, many of which are much more major than the ones I've listed here, both in terms of their gameplay impact and how long they've stayed unresolved. I could be at this for literally like eight hours if I wanted to. I think that would be a waste of time. Any one of these in isolation might seem small, but this stuff took me like five minutes to think of straight up off the top of my head. It took no time at all to find them in the first place. Literally, you boot up into a battle and you find it immediately. Think about how long that list of known and confirmed issues is on the top of the Total War Forums page. Then think about all the ones that have not been acknowledged yet and how they could be affecting your campaigns and battles. I do not want nor expect perfection. I fully understand that a game this big will have bugs and that is okay. What is not okay is investing the bare minimum into keeping a game this gigantic afloat and when it comes to bug fixing and quality testing old content to ensure everything is still running smoothly, I feel like we're approaching the bare minimum. The few people assigned to those kinds of roles are doing what they can. I am not calling them out at all. They are doing their best. I know they're trying. I know many of them are passionate about the game and want it to be as good as it can possibly be. I am calling out the system that seems unwilling or unable to allocate additional dev time to fix the massive slew of issues and bugs that continuously crop up with every single patch, simply because the bottom line looks better for shareholders at the end of the year by ignoring those problems. Even though there are other strategy game companies in the same sphere of the internet who have shown that willingness, who made the correct decision to invest a little bit more, to work out those problems, to generate goodwill, to ensure that customers are happy 
and feel as though their DLC and game purchases are being rewarded with support. What this game needs, in my opinion, is a custodian team to come in after a DLC has come out, after a patch, and truly fix those issues, to stamp out those bugs and get the ship up and running again, so that we don't have reported problems plaguing the series for multiple years or simply never being fixed at all. Anyway, those are my thoughts. See you all in the next video.